In the final video of today's lesson, we're going to learn how to create variables, which is crucial for any programming language, as you might imagine. So the syntax for that, the concrete syntax, is you have parentheses, you write define, you can have white space here or not, uh, and then you certainly have to have some white space here, an identifier, white space, expression, optional white space, parentheses, right? So here's a very simple example. I want to define pi, and one way of writing it is I do define, and then after that, any line that follows it will have access to pi. So if I write define pi, let me copy paste this example. Oh, actually, I already have it. Let me see. There you go. So here it is. Here is the example that we have in the slides. So we define pi as some value. Uh, then we print out pi. And then we print out uh, doing 2 pi. So if I run racket. Nothing to surprise, right? It would work. But if I were to write pi before, well, here it's not defined. So one would expect an error. Let's see. Yes, it says pi is undefined. So everything works as expected. OK. So by looking at this definition, we see an important uh, thing, which is to say this is any expression. So it could be a function call. It doesn't have to be a literal value like it is here. Um, and that is important. We will see why, especially for your homework. Um, homework two, actually. For now, it just means that under any define, you can have some computation going on, right? You can have evaluation happening under it. And by under, I mean this expression. Um, okay, so now we are ready to define, um, to revisit our uh, specification of racket. So a racket program has, again, pound lang uh, racket, and then it has zero or more terms. So what are terms? They are either an expression or a definition. And here, notice that I made distinct definition from expression. I'm, so a definition is not an expression. And why is that? Well. This is a very important um, restriction because it says that you cannot create a definition when you're calling a function. So if you were to write, because otherwise you would be able to, you know, this is calling a function, right? Pi. So could I do uh, foo or, or two, two, right? If define were an expression, then I could declare a variable inside uh, a function call. Why not? Uh, so there are two questions here. First, would this even make sense? What is the the return value of defining a function? And we'll cover that in the next slide. But for now, uh, by imposing this restriction, so by saying that define is not an expression, it means that you cannot define variables as arguments of function calls, Okay, which is something that most people expect, right? You wouldn't expect uh, to have, uh, so define two, and then I would do two. Okay, and if I were to run this, um, I get exactly the same value here. Okay, so this, in this restriction is important for the reason I just said, so that you don't use definitions in crazy places. You want it to be at the top level. Basically, it's the only place we're saying so far that you can write a definition is you have a bunch of definitions, and then you can use them after. Okay, it's the only thing we can do so far. So we, so two things we might, you might have wondered even before, because before a program was zero more expressions, and now a program is zero more terms. So what happens when you just write a program with zero uh, expressions? What would that be? So do I have that? Let me see. Cat voids. Ah, okay, so so why don't we write an empty code, an empty example? Uh, we may wonder. Well, is that a is that a valid program? Because here in this course, I really want you to think about 
programming language is not as, you know, a user to write an algorithm, but more like, how can I break this language? How can I understand how it ticks? That's really what I want you guys to think. So thinking about weird corner cases is crucial to understand anything. Okay, so what would be uh, the execution of, a, of an empty program? Well, it, it's a program that doesn't do anything, so it doesn't print. So is that a value? Is an empty thing a value? <laughs> so that's kind of like a mind teaser, but it is actually in record. There's an, a way to represent uh, nothing as as a value, and that is um, the runtime expression um, void, which you can get by calling a function void. This is a special function that uh, just returns void, and it's the only value that is not printed to the screen. So if I if I actually so this is an empty program which is equivalent to calling void okay uh, and I have another program here which is void so so the special function void uh, when called returns nothing uh, but nothing is a value again so if I do uh, racket void it again prints the same thing, which is nothing. Uh, but more importantly, I can do define v, and I can do, well, define v is void. And that also works. Okay. So, uh, with that in mind, I can do, um, the, um, and v, which is void, and three. So, w what is that? So we have a, a logical connection, a logical connective, and we're saying that we have v and we have 3 and if you recall 3 is not false so if it's not false it's true so I could also maybe rewrite this by v and true um, but what is v? v is void I said void is nothing so is nothing uh, true or false? <laughs> it must be something because everything is a value um, nothing is something which is an interesting um, thing to say so it is true Okay, so if it's true, that means uh, it returned this value, right? So if it's returned this value, and here it returned 3. Okay, so uh, what if I do, do the opposite, 3v? Would that also return true or false? Return 3. True. What do you think this would return? So, for this to return something that is not false, it means it's returning one of these arguments. That's how we said that AND works. It evaluates its arguments until it finds the first false, and when it does that, it should abort. Um, that's actually an exercise I asked you to think in our last video. Uh, but for now, we have tree and we have v. So if tree is true, it's, it means it should continue executing. It should e execute evaluate v, and v... What is V? So nothing showed. So notice, here we have V3. So this corresponds to this line, and this line corresponds to this line. So where did this line go? Why is no output being printed? Because void is the only value that is not printed. So it's the same thing as you were to print out nothing, and then, and then something you do a definition, and then you evaluate end, and you return three, and then you evaluate v true, and you, you return true, and then you evaluate three v, and you print out void. And that's why void does not appear, and that's why you only see true expressions here. But that also leads us to conclude that the return value of define, is it void? Yes, it is void. So the return value of a define is void, and this is why. So void is a funny value. So that's this slide, the question I'm asking here. And then we, we have the whole thing, explanation here uh, for you to play with. Okay. So I hope you had fun. This is uh, just a slide explaining detail, uh, step by step, what happens when we evaluate. So when you have a function, what we do, uh, sorry, a variable definition, uh, what we do is we find and replace, first we evaluate define, as we know it's void, uh, and 
when you do this pound point, it's just a way to represent something that would be, uh, you know, the runtime value of void, which you don't see, the record doesn't print out to screen. So that's why, um, that's why I'm showing this here. So you would evaluate this term, which is the definition, that would return void. Void is not printed to screen, so that's skipped. Uh, and then what you have is actually pi, and you know that pi is 3.14, so you would evaluate pi into a value. Again, remember that a variable is an expression. So if it's an expression, we evaluate to a value. What is the value of that variable? It's 3.14, so you replace it. Um, and then we, is the function call ready to evaluate? Yes. Why? Because all of its arguments are values. So only here is it uh, ready. Uh, and then it would uh, perform the multiplication and would return this. Finally, it would print out the screen. So this is a step-by-step -step evaluation of this simple program, which I hope you go through step-by-step -step and really understand what's going on. The crucial point here is uh, evaluating a variable and not assuming that the variable is a value. It is actually an expression. So it needs to be evaluated somehow. Okay, that's the key point of this slide. Uh, and finally, it's just a, a small heads up to say that in record uh, plus multiplication, addition, subtraction, multiplication, all the arithmetic and special under quotation mark operators are really not special and you can redefine them. So this is a weird program where we define uh, plus to be uh, false and then you call false, which is completely an error, right? You can't call false is not a function. So that would be, let me see which example we have here. Um, code, let me just write that example, bogus.racket. So if I write this, this is my bogus program. And if I run it, what you will see is that I have six point two eight three one eight, which is what you would expect from this expression. And now because I redefined plus to be something else, uh, I get this error. And application is in record lingo calling a function. Procedure again is function. So it's saying I can't call a function because given because you've given me a false. So false is not a function and therefore cannot be called. Um, so this is just a heads up. Record is not does not treat uh, arithmetic operators specially. Firstly, you, you must have figured out that because of it's not in fix. And secondly, because you can really redeclare them, which can create really subtle bugs. So don't do that. And that's it. I hope you had fun today.